Hello and welcome to another standard video. Today we're taking a look at a blue, red and green or teamer ramp deck that's gonna try to survive the pretty aggressive Bloomborough meta in best of one. We are capable of interacting early in this deck with cards like Torture Tower, which is great at answering creatures like the Heartfire Hero, which can otherwise deal damage on the way out. We also have a Braid to potentially deal with an artifact, since the red-white tokens deck has become more popular, so this can be a potential answer to an opposing Orbrask's Forge. And then Fires of Victory, we can also kick later in the game to draw an extra card, but also a solid removal spell for 2 mana. And the Whale can also be adventured to maybe bounce an attacking creature back, so it can also be a painless way of dealing with a pumped up Heartfire Hero or Cacophony Scamp, and then also gives us a nice finisher at 6 mana, and also a potential card to discard to an ill-timed explosion to wipe the board and this is going to be another great way to stabilize against aggro we get to draw two cards and then we may discard two cards if we do we get to deal x damage to each creature where x is the greatest mana value among cards discarded this way but against other matchups where we don't need the board wipe it's just a four mana draw two potentially also gaining a bit of life if we have ancient cornucopia on the battlefield one of our ramp cards that can tap for a mana of any color and whenever we cast a spell that's one or more colors we gain one life for each of that spell's colors so another payoff for having lots of multicolored cards in your deck can potentially gain life in both your turn as well as the opponent's turn if you can cast an instant. And then we've got the Clifftop Lookout from Bloomborough as another ramp card, a 1-2 reach creature that will randomly find a land to put on the battlefield tapped. And then by playing one of our ramp cards on turn 3, we can potentially play a turn 4 Roxanne, which will enter making a meteorite token, dealing 2 damage to any targets, and then can tap for 1 mana of any color. And while we control Roxanne, it actually makes 2 mana, since Roxanne will amplify the mana generated by artifact tokens. And then if Roxanne gets to untap and attack an additional time, we can make another meteorite token, so that can also snowball pretty quickly. And then the eventual goal with all that mana is to sink it into a large doppelgang, which can be awesome if you can fire it off for X equals 3 or more, as we get to select X target permanents, including the opponents potentially, and create X tokens that are copies of that permanent. So X equals 1 for 5 mana total, we just get to copy one thing, not particularly exciting. X equals 2 for 8 mana we get to make two times two tokens so we're getting four pieces of cardboard at the very least and then x equals three or more is where things get really crazy can even copy the leftover meteorite token from roxanne which will deal damage when it enters once again can immediately tap for mana can also copy the cornucopia to gain a lot of life back can of course copy our creatures as well including the dream dew and trancer which is a three four with reach when it enters we can tap up to one target creature and put three stun counters on it if we control that creature we draw two cards so this is quite flexible at either locking down opposing creatures against aggro, but we can also tap our own creatures, including the Entrancer itself, just to draw two cards. So now if we're copying the Entrancer a bunch with Doppelgang, we can maybe lock down the same creature several times and then draw two cards for each Entrancer that enters. So that can also be a great way to refuel. And then topping off our curve, we also have a Bonnie, which will enter making a bow token, which grows with the number of lands we control. And then whenever we attack, can be the same turn we played Bonnie, if we have other creatures that can immediately attack, we get to draw a card, and then we may put a land card from our hand or graveyard onto the battlefield. It's also very synergistic with cards like Fabled Passage, which will automatically end up in our graveyard, so we can get it back with Bonnie's trigger and get all the basics out of our deck, which will also thin it out. And then the mana base is just a mix of dual lands to fix our color, of course, Fabled Passage with Ample Basics is the backbone of the mana base. And then we've got a mix of Pain Lands like Sheevan Reef, Forest, and the Yavimaya Coast, as well as some Fast Lands like Copperline Gorge and Spire Bluff, which will be untapped in the early turns, especially focusing on red mana that's untapped early, because that's needed for casting Torture Tower as an early removal spell. And then a couple tap lands that can provide value, like Hedge Maze to Surveil and Thundering Falls. And then just a one Vine Stalk, since the meta is pretty aggressive and best of one so you don't often have time to animate your creature land in best of three i would be more inclined to add a second or third vine stock into the mana base so yeah that's our deck now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does all right we're on the play we've got what looks like a keeper can start with thundering falls turn two passage for a forest and then spire bluff on three into cornucopia can still torch the tower and our opponent's got to turn one hero, so that's where Torture Tower's perfect. Wait for them to maybe pump it up, otherwise I'll take one. And 
next turn I can still torch the tower after playing Cornucopia, opponent plotting a slick shot. So they are gearing up for a pretty explosive turn here. Letting them untap with more mana does mean they can potentially cast more pump spells and punish Torture Tower only dealing 2 damage. But yeah, if I'm not forced to cast Torture Tower, I'll just take 2. I'll let them make the first move since we have the explosion next turn. So, Bane Splitter. I'm going on Heartfire Hero, I imagine. And then I can respond to the Valiant trigger, so I don't take any damage from the hero. Even if they Monstrous Rage, their creature would still die. A Felonious Rage, that one also doesn't really do much. And their creature gets exiled, so they don't get a 2-2 token, so that was just a waste. Yeah, we definitely encountered a few opponents making mistakes in the face of uh, Torture Tower. I can lock down this Lick Shot, I could tap itself just to draw, or I could cast the Explosion just to deal with a Lick Shot, which feels kind of weak to me. Maybe I just go Cornucopia and wait a turn. Opponents on two lands, so they're kind of limited in how much damage they can do. And if they play an extra creature, we'll get it with the explosion. I think my eventual goal is to cast a double gang copying an entrancer as well. So we can draw more cards. Opponent with a brew. I haven't seen that one before. So just a pump spell basically. And we get a fish. Actually useful since now I can target it with the entrancer and still have a reach creature back on defense. So, can go Cornucopia. Not gonna gain life yet, since we can gain two. I may as well attack for one. And then gain six, and draw two, while having a 3-4 reach. And then I would like for the Entrancer to survive, but if it trades here, it's not a disaster. And now we can double gang for X equals 2. Slick shot attacks. Yeah, I mean, I could just take it, to be fair, and then next turn copy and transfer a bunch, or just play Bonnie and attack to trigger it. With only two lands, I feel relatively safe. Take 6. Do they also have a cell sword to sacrifice for eight damage? They do. All right, so we're at three, but we'll be able to gain a bunch of life back here, so I'm not too worried. And uh, do we doppelgang? Yeah, I think doppelgang over Bonnie. Although that's a close call. Bonnie would close out the game a little faster if I doppelgang for two. Then I get to draw four cards, copy the Cornucopia, which is untapped, so I'll still have two mana left to potentially cast another spell. Yeah, this is funnier. And then this fish is just gonna get buried in stun counters. And yeah, now Torch the Tower at instant speed can also gain 5 life. Cacophony Scamp we can exile. But yeah, theoretically for opponent 1 Scamp, Monstrous Rage, Cell Sword, that would have been, I guess, 8 damage, so still a little bit short. And uh, sure, I'll just take my turn. And we should be able to close it out pretty quickly now. Start with Bonnie, gain another 10 life.
attack. And get back Fabled Passage is good value. And our opponent's hanging in there. Bonnie also has reach, so it can block a slick shot for what it's worth. Could play another Entrancer. Well, let's just pass. This game seems over. And we don't mind sacrificing our fish token to bargain, just to put it out of its misery. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a pretty slow hand without any early ramp or interaction. But on the play I can maybe still get away with it. Hoping to draw into some uh, one or two drop here, especially for up against aggro. Can get our blue mana sorted. Facing a red-white, so it could be the control deck. And uh, yeah, Cornucopia was a good pickup. So we can curve Cornucopia into a Roxanne. Doppelgang, a nice finisher that can also copy the Meteorite token. And if we are up against the red-white tokens deck, we should be able to go over the top of what they're doing. And we don't care too much about cards like Temporary Lockdown. Now Roxanne unlikely to survive in order to attack, since they will probably have some removal for it, but that's okay. Opponent already has the Caretaker's talent, so now they need some tokens to start drawing cards. And Lightning Helix indeed takes care of Roxanne. And a Carrot Cake will draw them a card. So the Entrancer will target itself to draw two here, unless we draw something better. Can keep up Torture Tower. And play a tap land. So we can already start doing some math on Doppelgang. If I cast it for x equals 2, that's 8 mana total. Could do that next turn already. Don't hate that idea. Opponent leveling up the Caretaker's talents. Could torch the tower in response. And then we kind of force them to sack the Carrot Cake if they want to Copy a token. So our opponent does not. Okay. Um, still fine with the doppelgang plan, even though they could now remove the entrancer if they're keeping up another get lost, for instance. Could also, I guess, pass, play the whale, and then copy the whale with doppelgang next turn. Which is also reasonable. Yeah, maybe we'll wait another turn. I guess we're not really in a hurry to cast a doppelgang. Opponent does finally just sack the carrot cake. And drawing with the talons. And then a braid hits Cornucopia. That's too bad. So now... I wouldn't be able to necessarily use the adventure from the whale and cast it as well, since there's no attacking creature at the moment. And an Orbrask's Forge. Alright, so what's my plan? Probably just gonna cast the whale end of turn. Then now we don't need to fear any removal in response to the doppelgang. We can also copy the opponent's stuff for what it's worth. 
So now the question is, do we want to play around a Sunfall? Because copying the Whale doesn't accomplish much in the face of Sunfall. So maybe I do just target the Entrancer for the card draw, and then the Forge for pressure, uh, which they wouldn't easily be able to deal with over time. Copying the Meteorite to get more mana is also reasonable. And then we can just lock down the same Entrancer. And get Forge going, which at least gives us a bit of insurance in the face of a board wipe. And Bonnie's not bad either. So there's a Sunfall as we suspected. So glad we didn't copy the Whale. a lookout. So we start with Bonnie. Go to attackers. Which will also trigger Bonnie. Get back our Fabled Passage. And I could fire a victory here, even if it's without kicker. Although, do we really care? It's not like their token is attacking past my creatures at the moment. So soaking up two damage is not super relevant in the grand scheme of things. Bone's probably going to cast another Sunfall. So I don't mind playing the lookout to find an extra land. Should probably fetch with Passage before I run out of basics. There's just one mountain left. Okay. And then ill-timed explosion could also maybe clear some smaller tokens. Now I guess they can level up the Caretaker's Talent to level 3, making this a 7-7. So then it maybe no longer dies to our Fires of Victory. But uh, this block seems fine, and I can jump with the lookout. Bonus got the Lightning Helix to finish off our token. And a Torch to Tower, fair enough. So, Fires of Victory, maybe after I attack. So I don't have a basic left, but I do want to keep more cards in hand for Fires of Victory, so that if I cast it with Kicker, I can still take out their token. So this Fabled Passage is just for show. And then play a Lookout, sure. Might hit our creature land. And pass a turn. Could also Explosion just to draw two cards, but might keep it as a way to remove some smaller blockers. And Beza can gain the opponent for life back, and make some tokens, and make a treasure. So was the full value Beza here? Not bad. I guess her opponent does have Demolition Field for a potential Vine Stock. And another Forge. But yeah, if I Explosion, discarding Bonnie, I still get to wipe the board. And then Double Forge can go the distance. So we should have it here. Bonus fully tapped out. Braid's not bad either. Can also Explosion discarding another Explosion just to clear the 3-3s three and keep Bonnie. 
and then a braid could finish off Beza, or we could finish off an Orbrask's Forge. Doesn't really matter. And Roxanne can also go face. And that'll do it. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is pretty slow. No one, two, or three mana plays. But uh, on the play, I guess we'll still give it a shot. And hope to draw into some cheaper cards. Can fetch for an island, so I don't need to take damage of Shivan Reef. And then we have double blue for an eventual Bonnie, although that's still pretty far. Opponent is on a red aggro, presumably. And yep, the fling version with a slick shot. And still nothing. So yeah. Could just die out of nowhere if we don't find some instant speed removal. Ill-timed explosion can just draw. Although I don't know if I want to tap out and let the opponent just kill me next turn. Whereas at least Roxanne starts applying a bit of pressure. There's a chance I still want to cast this as a sweeper. But yeah, it's mainly just discouraging the opponent from comboing off. Swiss Spear is fine. And our opponent does go for Slick Shot. Alright, let's see if we take a ton of damage. If not, we can maybe clean up with the explosion next turn. Bane Splitter on Swiss Spear. And we see another Pump Spell. We do Monstrous Rage. Good for another 6 damage. So we're at 7. But we get to clear the board at least. Torture Tower a little bit late to the party here. So yeah, Roxanne to take out Swiss Spear is not going to be good enough. Need to cast the Explosion and then keep Torture Tower available as well. And then, yeah, I'm gonna have to discard either Roxanne or Bonnie. Next turn I can actually cast Bonnie, which is maybe better than Roxanne, even though two damage to a creature could be relevant against another Slick Shot. Bonnie closes out the game a little bit faster. And then... I don't necessarily need to keep three untapped lands, so one of them can go. And keep up Torch for another haste creature. Opponent passes. So now we'll play Bonnie. Also has reach, so it can block a slick shot. But our opponent could still kill us with a Kalos Cell Sword sacking a creature. It's gonna be an Ire. And a Monstrous Rage, alright. So they actually get to trample over. And another Bane Splitter. Okay, did not expect the sequence were a 2. But we can lock down the Swiss Spear. Bonnie likely wants to attack. And an explosion's not bad either. Can get back Fabled Passage. So... Actually, finishing off the Swiss Spear is safer if they find a Cell Sword off the top. Um, so if I explosion dealing three or four damage, that would do it. So I guess we'll start there. All right, and then Lookout can go. And at this point, maybe the Vine Stalk, and then I'll just play the Entrancer. And 
And then I do want to keep a blocker back, so I don't think I target anything. Even though I could also target Bonnie just to draw. Bone's got a land. And now we should be safe. Attack for nine. Have Torture Tower for any haste creature. And I guess I can even doppelgang for one, just to copy the meteorites and finish them off. Alright, sweet. Close one here against red. Might have wanted to double block the Swiss Spear that one turn, but it worked out. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got what looks like a keepable hand. Not sure yet if we'll need to keep up towards the tower. If our opponent's playing the uh, Deep Cavern Bat, we may want to take it out on response. And then I don't have a two-drop in hand anyway. And yep, there's the Bat. Black discard decks can be tricky sometimes. Because we don't have great answers to Planeswalkers like Liliana. And especially if they can play that on turn 3, it can start ticking up pretty quickly. And in general, discard spells are good against a deck that needs a lot of resources to get to our powerful spells. So this could prove to be a more difficult matchup. I think I'm looking for a 3-mana ramp card. Even though I'll eventually need a land 5. And yep, speak of the devil, a Liliana on turn 3. So that's not what we wanted to see. At least Roxanne can damage Planeswalkers. For now, maybe get rid of the explosion, since Entrancer gives us some board presence while potentially also drawing. There's still a tiny chance I can doppelgang my meteorites from Roxanne, although not keeping my hopes up. And then, uh, we'll pass for now. Yeah, probably have to give up doppelgang. Another bat can now take my only 4-mana play. Goes for Doppelgang. Alright, that's surprising. Don't overthink things. So, gotta discard a land. And then Entrancer targets itself. Even though it could start pressuring Liliana if I just lock down the bat, they're also likely to have removal, plus they can just minus Liliana, which would be good, but now if I lock down the Entrancer, they don't really have a reason to. They can just plus again. And a bat number two can now snipe Roxanne before I can damage Liliana. Although how bad is a Liliana ultimate for me right now? May still be survivable. Kind of a good thing that these deep cavern bands have all good cards underneath, so that if I later find removal, I can still maybe deal with them. I guess it's just Entrancer. Lock down the Entrancer once again. And play a tap land and pass. Could also keep lands in hand if we're afraid of the ultimate, but they might plus for another turn first. Now probably getting rid of Cornucopia if they make me discard, but nope, opponent's happy to ultimate. So, yeah, we'll probably have a couple lands left over still, so we can rebuild. And our opponent also had to discard a lot of cards with a plus, so they lost a few resources. Probably have to keep three lands no matter what. Although, maybe if they go two lands and both entrancers, I could be tempted to keep the uh, two creatures possible they have another Liliana in hand, ready to activate as well. Alright, so select a pile to sacrifice. Well, I guess we'll sacrifice a two-lined pile. I'm glad there's an extra confirmation here. Alright, so we'll see if they have another Liliana. They do, makes sense. So that will take up. Whale has to go. Smarting. 
Yeah, it's going to be a while before the Entrancer gets to attack, so our opponent's going to be able to ultimate another Liliana in the meantime, unless we top deck. Bonnie, oh man, so close to casting it, this hurts. Childress Edict, and then plus. I'm tired we need a Roxanne off the top right now. Ill timed explosion, I guess, could still draw into a Torch the Tower. And Braid, I guess, to clear the Deep Cavern Bats. Get my two spells back. Does our opponent ultimate again? I guess they kind of have to, otherwise Roxanne can damage Liliana. So, yeah, double Liliana ultimate. I get to keep the three pile, which is probably going to be three basics. No opponent plusing. So do they have another discard spell then? Or are they happy just making this trade? And then minusing Liliana in the hopes of getting back to an ultimate. Do not touch me again. So opponent forced to minus two, so now we're pretty far from another ultimate. So we're back in the game. Whale, I can play at instant speed in their turn to play around the minus two. So yeah, we've got a decent shot. If they have another Shoulders Edict, they could answer the Whale. Put on getting rid of Shieldred since they only have three lanes. And now a Carvac. Okay, Carvac's gonna have to chum block. And then Liliana can minus to get rid of the whale. But now I'm building up my mana so I can potentially cast whatever I top deck. So the game goes on. Another Roxanne would be great, Bonnie would be awesome. Torture Tower cleans up Liliana. Alright, can't believe we survived a Liliana ultimate, almost a second ultimate. Better opponent went with a different approach. <laughs> Alright, the Liliana number three. Only fair. Well, if we miss for a couple more turns, we're facing another ultimate. So we need one of our heavy hitters. At least our opponent's forced to discard their removal, and we found a Torsha Tower. So now is the correct place to wait for the opponent to plus Liliana and then torch the tower in case they had a card they needed to discard. And then I could cast it with Bargain here, sacking my meteorites, so I get to uh, scry as well and deal one more damage. And Fable Passage can go to the bottom. Alright, Doppelgang, maybe not quite the card I was hoping for, but I'll still take it. So I can cast it for x equals 1 here, a little bit shy of casting it for x equals 2, just 1 mana short. Um, so I can copy the opponent's Liliana and start plussing. Well, this has been one crazy game. We're ahead on the Liliana Ultimate race, and Roxanne should now close it out for us. Our opponent can minus Liliana to get rid of it, but then we no longer have to worry about it. Drop it. Well, did not imagine we were going to be the ones to ultimate a Liliana this game, but here we are. Bandit's talents, pretty good to start leveling up.
And yeah, I mean, Pono could still take over with that talent. So let's cry. Ill-timed explosion is good enough. And ultimate. So bandit's talent in one pile, and then maybe give them two lands alongside it. That seems fair. And our opponent keeps two lands, bandit's talents, okay. They are drawing two cards per turn. And another bandit's talents. That one they will struggle to level up at least. So, gain four life. Draw two cards. And play lookout. And then let's see here. I guess I could keep a land in hand now. The game that keeps on giving. A negotiation gets rid of my mountain. And talent keeps leveling up. A braid doesn't do anything for me. Alright, so... What am I drawing towards? Another Bonnie. I have two of those left since I had to discard one. Got a few redraws. How many Roxanne's are left? Two of those. No more Doppelgang, sadly. And then the Vine Stalk as a creature land would be great. Ah, there's Roxanne. Oh, their opponent could have a bunch of removal in hand by now. So yeah, maybe I should have been splitting Bandit's talents with no lands, so they wouldn't have been able to build up their mana in the meantime. Negotiation would go after a braid. Um, yeah, I don't want to cast it to destroy my own stuff. Even though that would gain a bit of life, so that happens. And a shield roots. that's a good one. Just a lookout to draw. Can still attack into shield root with Roxanne. But yeah, not having any doppelgangs left here means... I don't have that inevitability that can win us the game on the spot. Who's going to be decking first? I guess it's kind of close. And now a Mirex can make 1-1s. One Wish we had more creature lanes for this matchup. Fable Passage to draw. So we have a lot of mana, but uh, not a lot of ways to spend it at the moment. Cut down my lookouts. And a painful quandary now. So if I cast a spell, I have to lose five or discard. Think I'm jumping here. All right, my last chance to top deck something useful, I guess. There's a vine stalk, but it's probably too little, too late now. Wow, good game. This was quite the battle. Two Liliana ultimates back and forth. 
But in the end, it was a bandit's talent that just took over uncontested. And there's a third talent. Yeah, our deck does not have enchantment removal, which is a decision we made. Maybe in the future we can consider adding a few frill banks, but those are usually more sideboard cards. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Could use a third lanes, but still gotta keep. Once we find our third mana, we're off to the races, and we can torch the tower in the meantime. We seem to be up against a aggressive red deck. So I'll keep up Torch. Turn two, we can play a tapped Fable Passage, and then turn three, we can start ramping towards Roxanne. So a reasonable hand to start out, especially knowing that we're likely up against Mono Red. And the Challenger, I will Torch, even though there may be scarier targets later. Also can't risk the opponent untapping and then enabling Prowess. And another Torch is great. And then maybe get an Island here. So I don't have to take damage off Yavimaya Coast. We eventually might need double blue for Bonnie. And then I can go Cornucopia, keep up Torture Tower still. Don't have another land to play Roxanne next turn, so... May just go for another Cornucopia. But the life gain's also great against red. Another challenger. And a Bane Splitter. So our opponent likely has another way to enable Prowess here. But I may as well make them use it. Hope it's not a monstrous rage, so that if I do play Roxanne next turn, I do get to take out the challenger. It is a monstrous rage, so it will now have three toughness, sadly. Okay, so not a turn we were hoping for. Can always play the Entrancer to lock it down. And then next turn we'll have a Roxanne available. Don't need another lookout. Putin can move the Bane Splitter onto this camp. And fires a victory the draw. So now, just gonna play Roxanne, take out this camp. Which can finish off Roxanne with the three damage. But uh, it's not gonna get any better. And I'm okay attacking now. Start applying a bit of pressure, we have another removal spell in hand. And yeah, re-equipping does trigger Valiant, although the Rage doesn't do much. Unless they have a fling effect here, looks like it, maybe a Cell Sword. Yeah, going face, so that's 9 damage. And our opponent gets a leftover token, so that was a pretty decent turn for them. Okay, so play Cornucopia to start gaining more life. Can play Lookout, but then Fires of Victory is not going to deal a ton of damage for me. So maybe I just pass with a Kicked Fires of Victory to deal 2 damage. Could also just cast it now to be fair, which is maybe safer. And then I'll gain one life from the Fresh Cornucopia. So our hand's not particularly exciting, but we do have a lot of life gain, at least. So our opponent's not gonna burn us out. And 
can hope to hit our creature land with a lookout. Probably fine to keep a land in hand in case of another Fires of Victory. And we've got some good top decks. Bonnie, Roxanne, Doppelgang, any of our card draw spells like Ill-Timed Explosion or another Entrancer. And there we go. Gain six life, draw two cards. Hardfire hero equipped with a bane splitter. Maybe they have another cell sword. They could deal eight damage here. So they're just gonna go for the Entrancer, but yeah, we're very far from getting burnt out, and there's Bonnie to the rescue, so now the game should be over. Can even attack with a lookout to trigger Bonnie, draw an extra card, put a land in play, and we're completely out of reach. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with what looks like a Keeper. Got some removal, a Sweeper, and then a nice 5 into 6. Could use a bit of ramp to cast Roxanne on turn 4, and there it is. And don't need another lookout, just drawing lands naturally is probably better. Next turn I can fetch while still keeping up Torture Tower. And a Dread Knight, also a great creature to exile with Torch since it's not gonna be coming back. Is our opponent on a Golgari mid-range deck? Although maybe more of a ramp deck after all, with a lookout as well. Yeah, for opponents going big, they could also compete with our late game. For now, probably get a forest. And then I still need to draw land for next turn, otherwise we're just casting an explosion. So I'll keep mountain on top. And Roxanne's gonna be a decent play. Our opponent could maybe make a shuffle with a demolition field, but I don't expect that to be the case. Alright, Deepest Betrayal. Still fine to play Roxanne here and let them get an attack in. Since it also generates additional mana for us. So we could play Bonnie next turn which is great with Fabled Passage as a land to get back. And what to discard? Maybe one explosion can go. Take four. Because if they answer Roxanne, I want a creature to attack alongside Bonnie. And then damage from Roxanne plus Torture Tower, also a way to exile the Deepest Betrayal so it doesn't come back. Put in place the Dread Knights. And the Liliana. That's fine. So I should be able to clean things up quite nicely. Next turn we can finish off Liliana by clearing the Dread Knights, although it's not going to be exiled then. Yeah, I don't think I care about the explosion too much. And then I guess with the extra mana from Roxanne, I can both play Bonnie and Torch the Tower. Although... I think clearing Liliana is still probably the priority over taking out the Deepest Betrayal. But that's also an option. Finish it off with Roxanne, but then our opponent gets a chance to trade for Roxanne. Um, I guess option number three is Torture Tower of the Dread Knight now. And then I get to attack Liliana. And then, let's see here, I guess the land enters untapped. So, never mind, we get to have our cake and eat it too. Roxanne deals two damage to Deepest Betrayal. Bonnie gets back a land, which is Fabled Passage, which can get another mountain. 
and then Torch the Tower can finish off Deepest Betrayal. So this was the cleanest solution. And now we are overextending into a potential board wipe. But um, I'll keep Bonnie in hand plus a land in case they make me discard. Oh, but the Beanstalk's fine. And a Dread Knight is acceptable. Alright, so we should be in business here. Can maybe fetch to thin out my deck first before we draw with Bonnie. Attack all out. Bones at two. And pass a turn. So now another Roxanne could close out the game. Doppelgang to copy meteorites in case there's a board wipe here. Virtue can gain two life, but they're still pretty dead to everything else. Alright, go for the throw with my token, so now they are technically still alive. Since they can chum block. But now a Fires of Victory can clear a path. Alright, sweet. Yeah, things didn't quite line up for our opponents, and that one turn where we got to clear Liliana and the Deepest Betrayal was pretty awesome. Alright, so we got to see our Teamer ramp deck in action, and yeah, I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. Seems like it's got a decent shot against the red aggro decks in the format, while still being able to go over the top of most aggro and mid-range strategies. Every now and then you will run into a matchup like Mono Black Discard, which can be strangely difficult. Opposing combo decks could also be more difficult matchups, especially the ones that don't rely too much on creatures and instead rely more on instants and sorceries to combo off, since we don't have any discard spells and no counter spells in the main deck either, but those are things that can be addressed after sideboard, since we can potentially bring in cards like negate or other counter spells like three steps ahead, which could also be a nice mana sink, copying some of our creatures and artifacts, and then we could also bring in enchantment removal, which we're lacking in the main deck. In best of three, I would also be more likely to add a few more creature lands into the mana base, since games tend to be a little bit slower, so you don't get punished for playing a tap land in the early turns as much, and there's fewer mono red decks to deal with, so those are all changes you could make. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!